Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nekra and it is week six of the XDL. This week we are going to be featuring our match with the shoutcasting Sylveons versus Nino Pokey Bros. And so I'm pretty excited about this one just because, you know, I am, you know, it's nice that we're past the halfway point now. We just got the back half of our schedule to worry about at this point. Um, but, you know, what's what's really Nerve-wracking to me is that I've been really busy in terms of the work that I've had to do. I'm not actually a full-time content creator, but I do esports casting and hosting as my full-time job. And I've had a lot, a lot of work this week, so it hasn't left me a whole lot of time to actually practice for the last few matches that we've had. Um, and particularly the match versus Viz, I felt like I definitely could have played a lot better, but there was just a lot going on at once. I'm Juggling Overwatch contenders, TFT, Reckoning, mid-set finale, and hasn't left me a whole lot of time to actually prep. But with that being said, there is someone on the front office team that has helped me prep a ton this week. And of course, I'm talking about Jake. Let's go ahead and bring them in here to talk about the matchup. All right, everybody, I've got Jake from the front office here on the line. And I'm so excited to have you for this week because you put in a ton of work for the preparation of this matchup. And so I'd love to get your insight. Plus, this is the first time we get a chance to have you on an X9 Draft League video. So Jake, how are you doing today? I'm doing uh, pretty good. Um, I'm feeling confident for this week. Life's good, no complaints. Uh, yeah, how are you? I'm doing okay. You know, it's obviously been an incredibly busy week for me. So not getting a chance to prep the way that I really want to makes me pretty nervous about going into this match not that i've not been nervous for literally every other match we've had for the x9 draft league but yeah i i would love to hear your thoughts a little bit about what you think nino's kind of biggest threats are that we're building around for this particular week yeah let's just get right into it then um so apologies i'm looking over here uh but this is where i keep all the info um so this week i really targeted down the biggest threats being Cinderace next to Clefable specifically. Mm -hmm. Well played Corviknight. Yeah. Um, the off chance there's a Seismitoad bring, that could get a little dicey. And just Urshifu coming late game are definitely big threats. Uh, the last thing that we initially had as a potential threat was um, a very disruptive Togedemaru, which mm -hmm. uh, later in the week we decided to prep a bit differently on the fly um and handle that sort of situation better which we'll explain soon yeah so i agree with that i definitely feel like in practice when playing against the seismitoad obviously it has abilities that make it very difficult for water type pokemon to really thrive against this team and it also has just a lot of ability to deal tons and tons of damage when necessary so it always makes it really scary when thinking about uh, what kind of threats are on the team, but that's exactly what we have to build around when it comes to a draft league such as this. So, you know, I, I kind of want to pull up on the screen for everybody what we kind of think Nino is going to run. Obviously, we've played against a bunch of different iterations of what this team could look like, but in my mind, we have like Latios that could have Tailwind. We've got the late game Corviknight that Nino is very fond of. Cinderace, obviously, that can Gigantamax and just be really, really scary with something like an Expert Belt. And then we also have Clefable next to that for Follow Me Pressure. Potentially, even Tyranitar and Stoutland could come here just because they're a duo that I feel like could function very well. Um, and if you know, Nino maybe isn't expecting us to run something like the Glastrier, um, or just kind of in preparation for some of the more special attack focus mons that we have on the team, then Tyranitar and Sand might actually be kind of good. But, you know, Jake, I'm curious to hear about your thoughts because obviously, like, Nino has kind of a smorgasbord of Pokemon that could kind of go together in a lot of different ways. So what you see on screen might not necessarily be what Nino actually brings. Like, there's also Gorgeist that could be a potential problem with, like, Leech Seed or something like that. Yeah, so obviously every week with the Draft League is a toss-up as to what opponents can bring versus each other. You know, one person might see it a completely different way than another. He could see that Tyranitar is the biggest threat to our team, and in our head, it's a non-issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at our prep, we have Hippowdon, Excadrill, Milotic, things that 
you know, handle it pretty easily. Whereas he could see, oh, it crushes Rotom, it crushes Bronzong, it crushes Gothitelle, it crushes yeah. Glaster. And it's like, okay, well, we prepped completely differently. You know, we left our uh, supposed ace Glaster at home this week, um, really opting for a more fast, hyper offensive team um, with Aerodactyl, Excadrill, Volcarona, Milotic, Sylveon, and Hippowdon. Um, and I said fast hyper offense. I'm more referring to the idea of what we came up later in the week, me and Michael, a.k.a. Atrix, came up with this idea of fast life orb Aerodactyl yeah. um, because of Will, a.k.a. Uh, Ally Switch's pains, idea of the Choice Banded Earthquake Excadrill being able to really stomp on the Clefable Cinderace lead just by, um, originally it was hey, go for Tailwind with Aerodactyl and throw out that attack. And then me and Michael were like, why do that when we can just max the Aerodactyl, get the plus one speed boost, or go for the max Rockfall and get the plus two speed boost, get off that Earthquake, and now Clefable's off the field, yeah. and there's a good chance Cinderace is off the field. That is true. So what uh -oh. I really appreciate about this matchup is that we have multiple different lines that we could really run depending on what the leads are coming out from Nino. You know, things obviously get a little bit tricky if it's not really the Cinderace Clefable lead that we were kind of expecting to see. But regardless, I feel like Jake, we put together a fairly good team that I feel like has multiple modes of play and will be really good against the Corviknight in the back. I'm, I'm specifically thinking of the Volcarona and also the Milo if we're able to play that really well in the late game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if Corviknight is not the max candidate for Nino this week, uh, Corviknight gets pretty easily handled by Volcarona with Sash going for Heat Waves um, and the Coil Milotic really being able to set up alongside the Corviknight if it is a setup variant with bulk up or yeah. iron defense. Um, and then we also decided to run Icy Wind Milotic, which <laughs> it has two boons, right? You get the speed control, but then also if the Corviknight is mirror armor, which it's expected to be, we actually give the competitive boost to our own Milotic because of that Icy Wind boosting our special attack, making it even easier to beat that Corviknight and not leaving it as up to crits as normal. Um, and, you know, if we're able to get speed boosts with Aerodactyl onto Milotic, those icy ones aren't even mattering. Yeah. Like, those drops aren't mattering, rather. Um, so I'm really interested in that. Um, but going with the idea of a late-game Corviknight, um, we also discussed the idea of if Nino goes for an early-game Corviknight. And I mentioned the Aerodactyl mm -hmm. Excadrill lead, and that's very, very volatile to a Corviknight lead. Um, so we actually decided this week to tech onto Aerodactyl with its life orb, Firefang, which <laughs> does a considerable amount to Corviknight. And even if it gets to plus one, you know, you're setting the sun for yourself, you're negating that plus one boost. Yeah. Um, and it also helps for Volcarona in the back to throw out an even stronger heat wave versus the rest of the team. So I think Aerodactyl and Volcarona are also a great lead if we expect that Corviknight lead. But like I've said, it's sort of a toss up if, if does Quarters of the Night lead, does Cinderace lead, it's very much up to that chance, and we're going to have to play, or you're going to have to play a lot around Corviknight switching in. Yeah, I think that's something that always makes me a little bit nervous when it comes to, you know, everybody has an individual play style that we're playing against in this draft league. And so you always have to consider what are some of the players' tendencies when it comes to actually playing this game. And I feel like in this particular case, it might be much better for me to just kind of really focus on my own game plan when it comes to actually playing out the set. But, you know, that game plan is going to change depending on what we see in team preview. So. Something just to consider going into this particular match. Yeah, you're absolutely someone who loves to get those predictive switches and try to nail down those sorts of cases. But I think this week uh, with Nino's playstyle, it might be best to just attack what's in front of you. And if that doesn't work in game one, we can always adapt, adapt in game two. Mm -hmm. If it works game one and not game two, adapt for game three. You're just going to have to play smart this week, and I know you're always capable of doing that. Well, Jake, thank you so much for the vote of confidence and also stepping on with the call to talk about the matchup at hand. 
always appreciate the work that you put into the front office. And you know what? Let's smash this week. My absolute pleasure. Thank you, Rose, for having me. And I can't wait to see what uh, goes down. Now that we've gotten a chance to talk to Jake, it's about time that we actually play our match. So let's go ahead and call Nino and get a chance to play out our week six of the XDL. All right, everybody, it is time for our week six XDL match versus Nino Poke Bros. I'm so excited about this match. Nino is such a cool person, and I really hope that this is going to be a really, really fun match. You know, I obviously don't know what we're expecting, and last week, that loss was pretty hard versus Viz because it felt like if I had played even a little bit more flexibly, and I also didn't have that misclick on not Dynamaxing, um, I think that it would have been... Uh, match that we could have won. But here is the official version of the team that we are going to be using for this particular matchup. And it's really important that I don't stick to a game plan this time around. Just play super flexibly and really have fun with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into team preview and see what's going on. All right, Cinderace, Urshifu, Tyranitar. We also have Corviknight, Togedemaru, and Seismitoad. So I actually did practice against something that was quite like this, but what's interesting about this one is that there is no Clefable. I was really expecting the Clefable to be able to use that follow me pressure, especially next to something like a Cinderace. And so this changes up my game plan just a little bit because I don't think it's as important for me to get Excadrill in here unless Nino really wants to try to run the Cinderace at first. Um, but I could definitely see a world where, like, because there is no Stoutland, uh, there's no Sandrush, there's, is there a way to side proc the weakness policy? I don't really think so. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try this and see if this is going to, to work. Especially if Tyranitar leads, then we get the Sand. Uh, so I can definitely see that being a really good thing for us. I, I also don't think I bring Milo for this particular game. Just worried a little bit about the Seismitoad that could be coming in. Um, and Aerodactyl can always just Tailwind. So I think that this is a good play. Uh, I really hope that this is the right game plan for this game number one. But we can always make some adjustments. So this is a best of three. I think Nino is having some trouble to figure out what to do. Maybe bringing in Hippo could have been a little bit better. But especially if there's like a Le Corviknight lead, it's gonna be really important just to see what we're gonna do for this particular set. All right, everybody, let's get into it. All right, Urshifu and Cinderace. Okay, this is really good for us. Um. I, we are faster, especially with Tailwind. But honestly, honestly, I'm kind of thinking here that even though there's no Clefable, I think we Dynamax Aerodactyl here. Uh, I think we go for Earthquake just to be able to deal with the Cinderace, and I'm going to max Aerodactyl actually and try to deal with the Switch. I think, I think that's definitely the way to go. Aerodactyl should be one of the fastest Pokemon on the field. Especially because we want it to be able to go fast to set the Tailwind since it doesn't have access to Prankster. So this plus one speed boost should be really, really good for us to be able to knock out the Cinderace with the fake. And if we don't knock out the Urshifu at, with Max Airstream, then we should be able to knock it out with... Um, uh, I don't know if he's expecting Max Aerodactyl. Let's go, let's go! <laughs> Max Aerodactyl with Life Orb. Let's see how much this is gonna do. Especially if we see a Max on the other side, right? Brings so Urshiva down, so it's Focus Sash. So it's really good information that we know that there is like a Focus Sash. And let me turn down the game volume just a little bit here. I realized it was a little loud last video, so thank you for the feedback. Doesn't affect Aerodactyl, and this should be a double knockout here. Very nice. Now, what's in the back? I feel like what's in the back is actually gonna be super, super interesting to be able to kind of see. Oh, it's Seismitoad. Okay, 
Okay. Oh, it's shiny. I like that. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty Seismitoad. Obviously, Seismitoad can max here, which is really scary. Um, we have the plus one speed boost, and I'm gonna max flare this core beat. Especially just to be able to set up for the end game, I feel like Volcarona could be really useful here, especially with like Giga Drain. Um, I know we're not getting a speed boost onto the Volcarona, but as long as Corviknight doesn't max here uh, and give Seismitoad the speed boost, I think we should be okay. That is the big worry there, for sure. What's maxing here? I really don't know. The Pokeball doesn't tell me anything this time around. I'll we'll have to wait till the big Pokemon comes up. And looks like Seismitoad. Okay. So yeah, I, I totally kind of anticipated this, but setting the sun here could also be really good just because Corviknight likely is here for a late game if it's coming in the back. And we are much faster and we have the life orb damage as well. This should be able to do a ton of damage to Corviknight. And we also set the sun so that Seismitoad doing Max Geyser is going to do much, much less to us than what we were hoping for. That does a lot of damage to Seismitoad as well. That's really good for us. So where's this Max Geyser going? Going right into the Aerodactyl. Yeah, we take that like a champ. Uh, so that's super good. Corviknight should be running Roost over Protect here if it is a late game Corviknight. So I think we would actually be safe. <gasps> it screens Corviknight! <gasps> what? Oh my gosh, I was, okay, all right, okay. I was, <laughs> I was really not expecting that. Um, I am going to swap Sylveon in because I think that later on it's going to be better to have a single target move on the Seismitoad. Um, but I'm going to go for the Max Flayer again just to be able to rechange the weather, uh, especially because this is our last turn of Max. Um, very curious to see if this Corviknight is running Protect. Because if it's running Screens, no, it looks like it was maybe going to try to go for a bulk up here. But we should be able to knock it out. Yeah, that's tons of damage even in the rain. And now the Seismitoad cannot do too much to us. Uh, it does know Sludge Bomb as a nice coverage move on the Seismitoad, but yeah, I wouldn't expect it to use it in this particular instance. Aerodactyl should be able to live here. And since we're faster, we should be able to set up a Tailwind and that'll really help us for the late game as well. And if Volk has to come in the back, then we always have Giga Drain for sure. Maybe we don't have to reveal that though, this game. I'm just going to Hyper Voice and I'm also going to Tailwind here. We should be faster. Getting a plus one special attack boost is gonna be a little oof, but Sylveon should be able to take this. Max Ooze doesn't have a super high base power when it turns into a max move. So it's really good to be able to see that. And let's see how much the single target hyper voice is gonna do here. Yeah, not very much. Um, that was kind of to be expected, but the fact that Seismitoad spent a lot of time having to go for the uh, things that it did. Uh, I, I know we're giving a, off, a, a lot of information on this arrow set. I'm just gonna go for dual wing beat here, I think, because I think that'll be enough. Very nice! We won game one! Oh no! <laughs> Life Orb recoil! <laughs> oh man! Alright, so going into this game number two, I'm not super expecting Mino to lead the exact same things in this set. Um, especially because the Cinderace and the Urshifu went down so early like we literally got a double knockout on the first turn so i don't think that the right game plan here is particularly to go for the same leads 
that we did. But also in some ways, if it's like not broken, don't fix it. I think actually Volk Aerodactyl here could be really good because if we can max the... Oh. Yeah, what if Corviknight comes in the front? What if it comes in the front? Let's see the full team here. We didn't even see Tyranitar. I don't think Sylveon comes this game. I kind of wonder if an Excadrill Max could be good here. Especially if he's not expecting it. I like Milo. Well, Milo... We don't have anything that would drop a competitive boost here. But setting up Milo for the late game could be really, really good for us, especially if they don't have a, um, an, and a Hippo Switch could be good too. Yeah, let's bring Volcaroni here. <laughs> I love Nina's player card. It's so cute. All right. Let's see what he decides to bring. So Corviknight and Seismitoad. All right, so he's leading Corviknight and Seismitoad here. Um, obviously, Excadrill and Milo here can be really, really good. We should be faster. But if this Corviknight decides to go for something like... Um, screens again, which it absolutely could. I think it still has bulk up as a part of its set, but screens is really interesting. Um, Seismitoad being on the field is kind of oof for me, especially because we have quite a few Pokemon that are pretty weak to it. Um, I don't think Dynamaxing Excadrill here is a very good idea. So honestly, I kind of feel like we lose Exca and we just start coiling with the Milo. Um, obviously, a, a really bad game plan for us would be like not being able to get a late game max. But I think Volcarona can max in this instance and actually do a really good job here. Maybe I should have thought about bringing Volcarona. That could have been really good. But Seismitoad maxing is obviously very scary. Seismitoad literally could get like three knockouts here. Yeah, and that doesn't do very much, unfortunately. We definitely lose Exca, but that should be okay. Hippo could come in and change the weather. And right now, our big game plan here is to try to get Milo as set up as best as possible. But seeing the Maxus tells me that Seismitoad, knowing that it could be physical or special, is likely running a special set, so that's not great. <sighs> Speed harshly falls, but competitive. Now, competitive is something that we really like to see. Okay. You know what? Volk has a sash. Volk is faster than Seismitoad. Oh, but we can't go for... This is really bad. Um, I'm going to try to go after the Corviknight here, and unfortunately we can't... I know Milo's going to be super slow, but let's let's slow down this game a little bit. Let's give ourselves another special attack boost. We don't want this Corviknight to get set up. And I know this isn't going to do a whole lot of damage because we are in... Rain? But changing the weather here feels very nice. And we only have to stall out two more turns of max before we can max grass size. This looks so risky. I... This looks really risky. This looks really Papega. We're not going to talk about it. 
Ooh, Max Ooze. Oh, but they are faster. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Huh. Well, that didn't do very much. Absolutely mattered. Oh my gosh. Oh, Nino, I'm so sorry. Oh my god, that totally mattered. Okay, so we don't get the special attack boost that we were hoping for, but we already have a competitive boost. Oh, that crit mattered so much. Oh, that's such a feels bad. Seismitoad's still on the field, though. We have to get rid of it. Like, it's incredibly important that we get rid of it. I know Max Flare is not going to do a whole lot here, but maybe Max Flutter by to drop special attack here could be really good into the Seismitoad. No. <gasps> no! Max Overgrowth complete. Oh, that totally KOs. That, that has to KO here. If that KOs, then I think we can just scald the... No, Cinderace is still faster than us. I think we go for a coil or a recover would have been nice too, but Cinderace could also just go for a bounce. Hmm. He's oh. Coaching Cinderace. Coaching Cinderace. <laughs> okay, we should we should still be good. We are a special attacker, Volcaron. Like, yeah, attack defense boost is nice. But, oh, maybe it is mixed. It could be a mixed set, actually. Seismitoad has great access to both physical and special moves. And with coaching being on the field, that would make, like, a lot of sense, I feel like. Now we still have one more turn of max here. We don't have a flying type move on, on Volcarona, but we are also slower than the Cinderace. We don't want it to bounce. That's the one thing that we don't want to do. Urshifu comes out here. I think the best thing that I can do is just Max Flare the Urshi and go for a Icy Wind, because I don't think Milo just gets knocked out here by... Oh, I guess the crits on the Urshifu would be pretty bad, but... Let's see how much this Pyro Ball does. <gasps> that does so much. Oh, okay. Urshifu must be going for something other than Sucker Punch, which is so good for us. Yeah, Wicked Blow here. Okay, we hang on from the crit. That's nice. Plus we proc our berry, which gives us a little bit of health back. And then even though Milo is really slow, we actually do knock out the Urshifu here and we slowed down the Cinderace. So, speed control ended up being really important in this particular match. I think we can just heat wave. I think Scald might pick up the rest. Cinderace at minus one. Are we faster? I don't think we're faster. But Sun should expire in a couple of turns. So, maybe preserving Milo would be a good idea. What do we have in the back? Give Hippo. That's right. That's right. But we do resist most of Cinderace's moves. Maybe... Maybe I do switch this up. Swap you. And go for the Scald. Like we gotta we gotta show off the green tank at least once in this game, I feel like. And changing the weather here is not terrible because Pyroball will do less to us, and then we should be able to scald. I love this animation. It's so cool. Yeah, that doesn't do very much. So scald should be able to do a lot, especially with a special attack boost. That is it! We just won our week six match of the XDL!
You know, Pokey Bros, GG's, well played. Thank you so much for the match. I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your draft league. And I can't wait to see how you do later. So thank you so much for the fun set. And yeah, that, that feels... It feels nice to have a, a 4-2 now in XDO. Now that we've played through our match, you know what time it is. It's time to talk to our front office about how that match went and get their thoughts on the match. I, I really I'm just... So the only that, thing yeah, after thinking about it for a long time person, that I'm scared of seeing I is potentially a very, very well-played Seismato. Because as we said, we don't have much yeah. to resist it. We have um, Giga Drain on Volcarona, right? If we don't see Corviknight, Excadrill wins. I'm just going to say it right now. What Cheetar aren't we going to see? It's about everything I mean, that it's we, expected. we expect. Yeah, we Cheetar don't see Clefable. Fable. But no Clefable is so, really good for us. Cinderace becomes a lot easier to deal with. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, Latios is something Ladios we were too. a bit worried about. Seismitoad is clearly the, the threat here. I like this. I would have liked Milo a little bit more than Sylveon, but I think Sylveon yeah. is a-okay. Sylveon is like, she's pretty comfortable with it. She plays it well. Let's get this party started. I'm really interested in what Nino can lead. First, she's Cinderace. Okay, it might be bad at Cinderace. Oh, this is so good. This is GG. This is just GG. Airstream right. quick. Just attack what's in front of you and don't worry. I love this. There's no way he was expecting Max Arrow. Nope. Okay. Nope. No Max? Okay. Okay. And there's, Ash. Ash. there's, there's the Ash. Sash. And there's Goodbye. the double knockout. Ding dong. Nice. All according to plan, except the part where the Cinderace didn't even max. Okay, so essentially here we just need to airstream the Toad and Earthquake, and then we can win with Volcarona. You could even max flare the Corbin. You could, you could flare as well. Yeah, this works too. The output. I yeah. like this. Seismi definitely maxes here. Toad plus one speed, Aerodactyl outspeeds every Seismitoad. That was a Calc I uh, made sure happen. Light what? stream. Why? All right. Switch is also good here. Really yeah, Switch is fine. Pretty sure that Max Flare just kills here through rain. Yep, it drops. Yeah, nice. And now we can Tailwind. True. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is special then, right? That should be dual wing beat range and GG. Yeah. Good job, Aerodactyl. No! Two for... Arrow! No! All right. Let's see the adaptation. Can we shout out uh, Rose's Series 7 team of Scarf Tyranitar and Tapu Fini? Yeah. Fini and that's uh, it? That was... I like that, that team. That was the... Whatever's left there is what we were using for uh, PC3 qualifiers. Hippo. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So dropping arrow. I don't Maybe. hate it. Me neither. Need Volcarona in the back. Yeah, Vulcan back mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I think that makes some sense given that, you know, we revealed that the Aerodactyl was so offensive. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. He leads Corby? I honestly expected um, this. What's Excadrill doing here? Yeah, Excadrill kind of sucks into this. Just like getting a free switch is probably fine too. I think Volcarona Milo probably just sweeps this. Volcarona does have to be properly positioned though. There's nothing here that can threaten the Milo setup. So if she can set up Milo, she's probably just fine. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, what? 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 <laughs> Max the Milo! Max the Milo! <laughs> Why? What? Uh, what? What is this Corviknight? Wait, how do we know it's not water absorb? Uh, because of its. Well, we haven't identified its fast, so you're right. This is super. <laughs> yeah. It's fast. Oh no okay. way! Oh, the rose plays pay off like always. Just wow, wow, oh. wow. Oh, oh my god. Is that a crit? That must be a crit. That must be a crit. Let's yeah. go! Let's go. That's so much damage from Icy Wind. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. Oh god, that size of is so dead to overgrow. And the best part is Volcarona still has Sash. Yep. Yeah, there you go, Rose. Let's go. <laughs> what? Oh, it is physical. Hey. What? Okay. Wait, I'm gonna die though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean. So A, it's physical. B, it's dead. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, no. And we get grassy terrain set up for Milo. Just oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I think Rose is right. I think it's mixed. If the icy wind hits, you're in pretty good shape. I think yeah. it was an icy wind, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Wicked blow. Okay, goes after the Good Milo. We it's do, uh... Yeah, you live that easily. Yep. We got the accuracy boost, so we don't even gotta worry about missing here, which is really yep. nice. Oh, true. True, true facts. So that was my concern at first, and then I was like, oh wait, we coiled twice, we're good. Mm -hmm. I believe that is what we call a jeej, boys. <laughs> you know what would be a, a really woke play? 
turn off the sun with Hippo and then just <laughs> like, call the Cinderace. That would be so fun. Oh, I, I love think, it. Uh, oh, you love to see it. Goodbye, yeah, I, sun. Goodbye, I, I, a little I, soccer I, bunny. I, I, let's go. Just won our week six match. Very nice. Quick. Very nice. You know, Poke Bros. Very nice. Well played. Easy. I did enjoy Excadrill Choice Band EQ yeah, just blowing up. Yeah, first turn. Will. Nice Will, yeah. amazing call. Now. Yep. Thank you, thank you. Good prep this week, guys. Especially after our loss to Viz last week in week five of the XDL, it feels really good to get a win back on the board. And a 4-2 scoreline, that's not bad in terms of making it to the end of the road, which is the playoffs, Al, at the end of the 10-week regular season. We still have four more matches to go, and yeah, I'm just super excited about what comes ahead for the rest of the draft league but if you want to check out nina's perspective and you definitely should check out all of their content please check out the links below that's gonna do it for this episode and this week of the x9 draft league thank you so much for watching thank you so much for all of the support and i hope to see you all in the next one